welcome as usual to the Geek Lab and today we have a uh, patient we're going to operate on this is my Optima DLP projector from the Snuggima which has a small problem in that when you're looking at the screen you see little uh, blurry white patches and uh, you won't see this I can't show you on the camera because it's not going to pick it up but anyway, it's a very dark screen you see them all over the place and what it is is dust either on the internal mirror or the sensor. You can tell it's in them because when you focus it the dust doesn't move, it stays where it is. If it was on this lens it would rotate with the lens, but it doesn't. So, uh, I'm going to show you how I clean this up. Uh, this is a very delicate operation. There is lots of little screws, there are lots of very delicate ribbon cables. If you break one, game over. Especially with a lot of these older ones, you can't just get the parts off the shelf. Uh, so if you don't know what you're doing, if you're unsure, let's not do this because, yes, better a mal a projector that's not quite right than one that's completely pooped. But if you want to go ahead, well, you're going to need some cotton pad type things, some so pipa uh some cotton buds. Various screwdrivers depending on what you need for the screws on your particular one and cups You'll need multiple cups Why does he need multiple cups you say well? The various different parts of this have different size screws and stuff so as I go through each layer Example the case I'll have one cup for the case or one cup for the motherboard or one cup for the optical uh, assembly screws so Keep them all separate instead of one big pile mixed up and you don't know what the hell goes anywhere. So, first thing you've got to do is get in the bugger. And this involves removing uh, screws. It's going to be different for every model. Yours is likely very different than mine. On this particular one, uh, there are two screws at the rear. <coughs> one, two, and two underneath. Plus, we need to remove the bulb. I can't remember what it was then. Need to remove the bulb, so we're going to do that first. I'm going to do it with the camera off because it's a gentle thing and I don't want to be disturbed by the camera. So I'm going to remove that screw and we'll see the bulb. Be right back. Right, uh, scrap that idea for this particular model. Uh, I removed the screw, but the thing which would not come off. I'm not going to force it too much to end up breaking the bulb. So if in doubt, leave it in there. It's it's better than breaking it. So, going to remove the screws and we're ready to take the top off. I'll be right back. Right, I have already taken the screws out and I've just released this top. Now, these tops are going to be held on differently on different models, and this one is whole little clips, uh, plastic clips that you've got to force it. But when you take these off, obviously, there's going to be a ribbon cable running to that control there. So, be very careful. And I can just see it there. So, um, you may not be able to see this, but I'm just going to... There we go. <clears throat> Get out of the way. The ribbon cable going, very fragile ribbon cable going to the top control there. So, be careful when taking that out that you remove that properly. All you do to remove it, as you'll see... Where is it? There's the clip. This will be in the down position. You just pull this up gently, and the clue ribbon will come away. There we go. Right, next stage. You can see already the optical assembly there on the right, obviously. And there to the left is the DLP wheel. That's what spins and uh, sorts out all the colours. So the signal will come in for the blue as that's going to the blue, and that will. Uh, Filter out the, and filter the blue. This will go to the chip. The chip will be in the blue position and will reflect the blue. And then it will spin the yellow. It's a, I'm no expert on it, but that's a very rough idea of how it works. That spins very quick, so try not to disturb that too much. So, next thing we need to do, we need to get this out eventually. Uh, so, on some, let me just see. No. 
on some they come off but this one doesn't so let's get this top plate off of the motherboard which is beneath there so we take these screws out and we'll be right back right now for the uh, gentle body operation this is the motherboard all the logic is there and as you can see it's got many connections uh, these can be quite fragile at times and the ribbon cable connections there that one doesn't have to come off but there are more there so it's a good idea if you're not sure uh, make sure you know what type of each connection is before you pull it you don't want to pull it wrong as it will come out uh, take a picture of this so you can remember how it goes back together what cable leads where uh, so for this one I'm going to remove them and then remove these screws I think there's three three and also the screws from the VGA connectors at the back which will also be holding this board in so I'm going to do that right now we will be back in a moment right that's the motherboard out uh, you might want to get an air duster and clean these off while you're, at, while you're in there it always helps to keep them nice and clear of dust stops any shorts of any leaf on that nice and safe next we've got the shroud which goes over the power looks like it's held in by just this screw now so get that out we'll get this off also beware with your motherboard there may be connectors underneath so pull it out gently if it resists don't force it have a look underneath see what's connected so let's get this thing out right let's get this thing out right here is the optical assembly which we're going to be releasing soon uh, but this power Board is in the way because this lens needs to slide back the whole assembly needs to slide back when it's loose to come out this is in the way now there are some solid connections uh, underneath there so it looks like it's not going to move all the way out but it might be able to get enough rotation to move it out so look very carefully uh, see what wires are running to it and remove them remembering where they go there's one there I'm going to have to snip that uh, there's an earthing one there which is connected there but the other connection is under there so that's going to be a pain but we'll release it and uh, see how much space we can make with it so remove the cables release the screws off we go right I've loosened off the board uh, this I cannot get this ribbon cable to come off so I'm not going to force it and uh, yeah the lead here is forcing it from moving very far but we do get a little bit of movement so it does give us some flexibility when trying to remove ow sorry uh, when trying to remove uh, the optical assembly which is what I'm going to try and do next now to do this we need to remove all the mounting screws these will be different obviously for every system on here, it looks like there's one, two there, uh, one down there, there's one down there, and Bob's your uncle. So, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to remove those screws and try and get this assembly out. Be right back. Right, there's the empty uh, the bay where the optical assembly was. Now, it turns out on this one, you can push this fascia forward, and that allowed it to be released. And if I just put that there, this is the optical assembly itself, so be gentle. Now I've worked a bit ahead of myself here because uh, here is the first mirror it reflects off. This will need cleaning and I've seen on this one it's quite dusty. Now this uh, is held in place by one of these spidery type things which I just pushed down on the top tab and it released. Uh, above that is a piece of tape which covers the whole thing. You'll need to remove that. And you can get the mirror. You may need to force it a little bit because maybe may be a little bit of bodge stuff holding it in place. But there's the mirror, and you can see how dusty that is. So first things first, we are going to clean this, which will involve some isopropanol and a cotton bud. Just damp this with the cotton bud. Sorry, damp the cotton bud with the isopropanol home, and ooh, rub this nicely. <laughs> Rub this nicely till it's nice and clear of dust and then get this thing back together. I'll be right back. In fact, scratch that idea. The summer is in there, so before you clean that one, put it back, you might want to just get your uh, Q tip and just have a rub in there to get rid of the dust off those mirrors. 
and the little ends just behind the wheel there. Just sit there. Make sure they all clean your dust. Okay, once I cleaned this, I uh, got the thick off with the pad here. I then used a cotton cloth, a clean one, to just rub the surfaces and make sure everything is clean as possible, including the mirrors in there. You can also use a bit of the old airbrush to get in there as well and just clean it off with a nice clean cotton cloth uh, with no lint so that you don't end up with fibres everywhere and get it sealed back up and I've got this protective thing which stops it moving put back on and I shall now return the sellotape then we're going to look at the front optics here right we have the front optical assembly out and you get your first view of the chip down there so uh, this is just three screws uh, around the neck there that go in and we take this out now we know that this one suffers from dust inside the assembly here so I'm going to remove these three tiny screws two three it's three or four one two three and uh, we'll get inside here as well and have a look okay I've taken the three screws out to the edge there turns out they didn't let me in uh, but I found on this one where is it a little bugger it's around here somewhere now if you keep twisting it like that ta -da! out it comes and you can now get at the different glasses inside you can see some dust in there so I'm going to treat these next. They'll be right back. Right, I've finished cleaning the lenses in that assembly and I've put it all back on as soon as possible just to stop dust getting in there. Other thing to note, while I was had this out I stored this upside down to, to minimise dust going up the shaft. So what we're going to do now, we're going to need to clean this wheel as well. So you clean this in the usual way, cloth, very gently though because it's, uh, yeah, it's quite fragile. Uh, we're going to get this chip off and you can see on this one there's just two screws to remove and the thing comes off so that's what I'm going to do now right very quick to remove and I've stored the uh, assembly upside down again so I can get dust in but don't know if you can see there but there is dust on that and it's pretty much in the pattern uh, that we were seeing so I'm now going to use a q-tip just to remove that dust and I'll get this straight back on so there's no chance of damaging it. Right, the uh, DLP chip is flushed back in there. Uh, it may not go into its slot uh, when you first push it because it got quite tight, but as soon as you put the screws in, it'll go back in. So uh, I'm gonna clean this wheel and then we're going to reassemble this thing. Uh, while you're in there, you might wanna have a dust around, make sure it's all clean uh, with the duster, air uh, duster. Don't put it at an angle because that risks putting fluid out the end of it. And try and use this. Keep it upright as much as possible. And then we'll reassemble the thing right back to the last stage where we'll leave the top loose. And I'll be back for that bit. Right, just a quick note. I've just cleaned the wheel and it is really worth doing because I didn't realise how thick with dust this is. This gets pouted by dust all the time so it had a very fine layer and it's now much clearer I just did it very gently with the q-tip don't rub it all because there's coatings on here and then just dusted it off with the spray can keeping it horizontal of course and now that's made such a difference but be very gentle right time to reassemble right a uh, short while later got it all back together and we fired it up Let's get these lamps out of the way and just for a quick gash test you can see on the wall there on the computer there That there is a picture and it is working. Let's see if we can uh, get a menu up. Yep, there's a menu So it is working. There we go I've Got a picture. I don't know how good it is yet, uh, but now that we've confirmed it's got a picture uh, So everything's plugged in and this top panel's working uh, we can unpower it down and <laughs> put the screws back in and then we'll go and test it downstairs and see what's happened. Be right back. Right, hello and welcome again to the Snuggy Mat. And, uh, well, you probably can't see, you wouldn't be able to see the damage in the first place on the uh, 
if I showed the original footage, but it is fixed, it is gone. Uh, this is actually the second time I've filmed this ending because I actually rendered this, uploaded it to YouTube, ready to put out, and I got a copyright claim because I showed a bit of one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's films. Despite the fact I reversed the frame and cut the sound, it still did it. So I'm having to show just a desktop this time. Uh, I'm actually filming this in the day as well. And there you go. That's the projector working nicely. So that works. If you've got any questions that I can answer, uh, then please leave a comment below. Uh, thumbs up if you like, thumbs down if you don't like, and uh, subscribe if you like this sort of thing and you want more tutorials like this or you want to see all of my other general nutty stuff and in the description below you'll see links to my social media so thank you all very much you need to quit being dirty you're a dirty boy <laughs> <laughs>